All things you need to know, I know. Hello, welcome. I am Khufu. Wow. Thank you for coming. It is a responsibility to come when information is needed. Um, thank you. Um, I uh, guess my first question is about uh, your life. What was your purpose? My purpose was direction. I gave direction and I gave purpose. That is why the pyramids were made the way they were made. They needed communication. They needed transportation, and they needed a way to do these things quickly. I was there to give them the information they needed for these changes, for these additions to their society, which they cannot give themselves. Mm. So how was your your um, civilization connected to Atlantis. Did you have Atlanteans among you? They were there to trade. They were there to communicate. Our civilizations were closely aligned. But they still existed even when we were there to a certain extent, but in a smaller and lesser amount. They were far more ancient than our civilization. Right. So I guess your civilization grew up. It was the first human Homo sapiens civilization um, after the destruction of Atlantis. So the shadow of that destruction was uh, still uh, uh, present there. So you grew up your civilization in the presence of that shadow. Yes. Many hieroglyphics will tell the story of the demise of Atlantis, but not in the way that you would understand it. The thing is, their version of the, de the demise of Atlantis sounds a lot different than what your scientists would believe if they even believed that Atlantis existed. The Lemurians also have their version of Atlantis, as well as all species that were there with them. So uh, when you were, your civilization developed, I assume there was still, uh, the Homo sapiens was still being developed and created. What was the uh, genetic engineering still going on? To some extent, but humanity looked human and was acting the way that it should within most parameters. So there was not much change from that point. Um, uh, were you, uh, I would assume that you were, were also a reincarnation of Atlantis and you were aware of that, right? I was from Atlantis at one time and that is why I had to return this part of the world needed my information, my guidance, and I enjoyed Atlantis and the earthly views, the earthly energies, and so it was a pleasure to return. Um, were you a human or an alien or a hybrid? I was not a human. Mm -hmm. I was from another place. Can I tell the race? I would prefer not to at this time. Okay. So there was a much of, um, how do you call it? Much of um, um, uh, uh, hierarchy and separation. Basically the rulers were of different uh, race than, uh, than humans, right? Correct. Unfortunately, we came not to be gods, but we were seen as gods and worshipped as such. There was no way for us to stop it. So we carried on as best we could 
with this kind of praise being given to us, which was actually a little bit of a setback. We needed the people to be more normal to, to us so that we could speak to them and get more information through. But they felt overwhelmed by us and therefore many of them did not even want to see us or be around us. Our energy was very different. All right. So now I understand that you were blue avians. Uh, we already had the channeling and they explained it pretty clearly. Uh, at the time, uh, it was, um, I, I can see your style of governing very rigid. You were uh, given very clear instructions what, what is to be done. And there was very little, how do you call it? Very little uh, initiative from, the, from below. It had to be that way so things could get done. Uh huh. There was not all the time in the world for us to do this. It uh -huh. had to be done and it had to be done quickly and expediently. Uh -huh. We did have things from other planets to come to lift the rocks, but we needed the people for many different reasons. And for all the smaller things that needed put in place, we put the machinery on their head and they would have the information they needed to uh, work with the technology and put it into place. We would work with them as much as possible. There was lifting and carrying to do with smaller items. This was very important. We needed them also for digging and building of smaller areas. There are things that have not been recorded that we had them do because it was nece a necessity in this, that sun, in that desert area to survive, things had to be maintained properly. Was it as uh, hot at that time? I was thinking that at that time the nature was much more mild there. It was slightly milder than what it is now, but 5,000 years isn't that much time for change. And so there was some, but not a great deal. I see. Um, so the top of the pyramid, there is a symbol that the top is critical. What, what, what is the secret about the top? The, the top was a communication and a teleportation device. It looked like a large crystal uh, or a crystal top for the, the pyramid. Now you see that, that it is gone. But it did bring in it, uh, great amounts of energy. It was amplified to do so. And it was used for several different reasons. You see how the chambers move sideways to the, from the top to sideways to the middle. Mm -hmm. I'll check it out. I, I know there are studies about that. These were chambers to mix, mix fuels. Uh -huh. It would not go all the way to the bottom of the chamber, but it would stop there to mix some energetic fuels for the ships to br when they landed to refuel. However, the base of the pyramid underneath was still intact and usable. Now, the top was used for transportation. It, it brought people in from outer worlds. It brought ships in from outer worlds. It brought communication in from outer worlds, and vice versa, sent out communication ships and beings. Uh, where did the ships would land? You said they were landing, they couldn't land on the top, right? They would land somewhere else? The ships were designed to land on, right on top of the pyramid, for they were designed to fit on top of the pyramid. Oh, I see. So is it practical, is it advisable to restore that system at some point? It will be found in the hieroglyphics that these, that there is 
information there on how to do it, but it is not understandable yet to your people how to do it. I, I'm thinking there are lots of other technologies now. Is this technology outdated? In our world, it is. Uh huh. Because there is but a lot of ships world, around. It would be your, your super, whatever it's called, space program. Uh huh has similar things that understand the pyramids more than other scientists. And so it is not completely outdated. Some of the information that is used for these things are still usable today in your society and many other societies. I see. The Mayan pyramids have a different shape. Were they, were they used as uh, also for... Uh... For, for landing and fueling the ships? Yes. I see. So uh, there is a, uh, a, a great interest in Pyramid of Giza as uh, a holder of uh, some sort of secret technology which would transform the earth and help ascension of the earth. There is something you... buried far beneath it. They are now finding the passageway to it but it is several miles below the surface. The passageway is only partially uh, finished, being dug out. I know we, uh, the humanity has uh, wonderful digging machines which uh, are la using lasers and uh, can create huge tunnels. And they, they are create... trying to preserve the staircase, so they are uh, not using that. I see. Right, it's very easy to destroy the technology by using that machine, unless Correct. you know exactly where to go and where to stop. Yes. So what's the purpose of this technology? Is it for ascension or something else? It is for all things. Is it uh, really necessary for ascension or can we ascend without it? You can ascend without it. But it is, it would be helpful in some ways, but in other ways it might be detrimental. I do not right. think it will be discovered until ascension is almost upon you. Oh, I see. So, it is uh, several miles below the earth and they have dug out perhaps maybe a mile. Right, so, um, you said that the stones were lifted by aliens? Anti-gravity machinery. Oh, machinery. Is it operated by the aliens or was it operated by the aliens or the humans? Only aliens could create this technology. Um, sorry, I, I asked, you know, were, were the machines operated by the humans? They could be, yes. Uh -huh. With the right instructions. What I said, when I told you they put the machinery on their head, it would uh -huh. speak to them how to use and uh, deal with the machinery that we needed them to work with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then the information, some of them would keep it, others would not. I understand. So um, now about the um, Egyptian dynasties, um, was it during the first dynasty that the pyramid was built? I'm sorry for my ignorance. It was I'm pretty after, sure, yes. Soon after the first dynasty, yes. Uh-huh. And why did, was there then a, a, a period of, uh, of uh, destruction of the government and uh, d decay? Because the people did not understand and were very afraid of what was happening. They saw people coming in and out from outer worlds, and they saw many things happening, and so therefore they were frightened, and many stopped working, and many stopped doing many of the things that were necessary for us to move forward. We had to appease them in some way, and therefore we showed to them that we could be kind and we let, let up on the work ethic 
and let them be themselves for a while. And that led to a few hundred years of um, downtime? It wasn't a few, it was only a couple hundred years. It was not that long. Hmm. And then it was, uh, so how long did the Blue Avians war with the e Egypt? When did you live, uh, live there? They lived off and on there for uh, several centuries, actually. Um, I think there were four, uh, four, how do you say, four periods of, uh, four dynasties or four periods of prosperity of Egypt. That was a special word for that. So was it uh, through the old four or the fourth one was already without Blue Avians? They were there during all four periods, but the last period they did not spend much time. They had I other see. other projects in other places. Uh huh. So only uh, some of the Egyptian um, pictures show uh, the birds. Some others show some other animals, like a dog, human, and some other. Was it like really a dog, human there? Yes, there is a canine species. There uh -huh. is more than one. There is a wolverine species, the lupines. But also, they came for different reasons, and um, we had trade with them and we had different reasons for bringing these beings to the planet. Uh, now the, the core of the Egyptian mythology is that uh, there will be a, a time of um, a resurrection of the dead and all the dead had to be in uh, one piece in the valley of death. Uh, is there any truth to that? Um, there, there is some truth to that. The spirits will rise from those places because they were set in the stones. Those that were put in the stones for protection will finally rise and leave. Um, so our current understanding that is the spirits live right at the moment of death. There is nothing left, nothing of interest left. We know how to put them in the stones and in the, in the places where they need to be to protect the areas. That is so, why the pyramids have lasted so long. There were marauders and there were times of war, but the protectors did their best to keep things safe. Ah, oh, so there are Spirits whose job is to protect the areas. Protect the landmarks that we made. Right. And at some point they will be liberated and let, let go. Yes. So they're still there. The spirits are still there protecting. And they, as they are in all of the alien sites, Machu Picchu, Puma Punka, and many other places. So the spirits are human, right? Some of them, not all of them. So uh, then uh, why is it important to keep the bodies in one piece for, uh, for, for that purpose? Is it relevant or is it not? It is not relevant to keep the bodies in one piece, but there, a body will be returned to them when they escape from the stones. Or should I really? say, they will be let go from the stones. Um, so there will be a resurrection and they would uh, get their living body back? Yes. Or would they be at, uh, on earth or elsewhere with the body? It will be on earth. But it will not be witnessed by humans. They will get their bodies back and they will be there at these sites but nobody will know where they are from. Uh, so they would plug back into the life or would they die? What would happen to the living? They will bodies? be picked up. They will disappear. Oh. oh, they will be picked up. So the promise will be actually fulfilled. Yes. And there is a service for picking them up? Of course. 
Uh, have that already happened to some? There are a few that have escaped from the stones over the years. And uh -huh. they have already been... Well, not all of them have been picked up, no. Some of them serve as spirit guides. Some of them serve as ghost-like figures. But they will get their body back at the right time. So the fact that the Egyptian mummified their bodies and kept them in well preserved doesn't is not relevant. It's not useful. It is for those that are in those mummified areas. The ones that are in the stones have a different story. They are oh. not royalty. So the ones in the stones don't need the body uh, to be preserved. Uh, the the bones and skin. So, and the ones who are mummified, they are attached to the to the um, to the mummy they are attached the bodies wow. will be purified and revitalized and even those which are in the museums especially those that are in museums but no one will see it happen uh-huh uh-huh but they will find the empty casings oh interesting is there a, a time frame for that no man shall know that time frame. Oh, sure. Oh, wow. Um, but it only, it's only valid for those who had contracts with you, or is it valid for any, any human bodies? It is only for those that have agreed to serve us in these ways, and for the uh -huh. kings who have done service with us as well. Uh huh. And the queens. So now if the, if the body was uh, partially destroyed, would it be easy for you to reconstruct it? Of course. And if it was completely destroyed? There is still DNA there to clone the body in many ways. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow, interesting. Yeah, there is a movie, uh, what's that? Uh, Indiana John and Crystal Skulls. Uh, it has some of that symbology and some of that resurrection idea. Yes. But there was also, I think there was 12 of them, 12 Crystal Skulls. Is it? Um... There are 13. Oh, 13, uh-huh. The, there are 12 Crystal Skulls that represent the Stargates. And there is one Crystal Skull that is the controller of all the skulls. Uh huh. The one that will be set in the middle. Uh huh. These have all been found at this point, but they mm -hmm. are scattered around your planet. But they will come together at some point. They do not have to be brought by their owners, if you will, but they will appear in a place set aside for them. And what's the purpose? What's the technology? It, you call it Stonehenge. Okay. Okay. And uh, what's the technology? What's going to happen? These will control all the store gates that are on the planet. Uh-huh. This technology has to be revitalized at some point because first contact will be of a very purposeful reason. And then... Uh -huh we will be able to tell your peoples where all the stargates are and how to use them. There are 12 main stargates and 52 smaller ones, one okay. representing each week of the year and 12 representing the month of the year. Okay, got it. Um, all right, wow. So, uh, what's your current, um, are you still in the same body? I am not in body at this time, nor do I choose to have one. Okay. What's your role? How do you participate in the process? This is my role to give information when called upon to revitalize Earth's intensity and energy when called upon to bring about change when necessary. 
So uh, how does that story come um, connect to the idea of uh, humanity moving to Teraha? Teraha exists already. Right. It is up to mankind to get there. Uh -huh. I am here to facilitate some of that movement and some of that information on how to do it. But the time is not yet right. Not enough of your people are ready. In fact, very few are. When it comes to people being ready to move into Teraha, it is less than 1%. Right. And what, what, what would be the uh, optimal percent? No, what would be acceptable percentage for the process to move? After the major occurrences, there will be many more ready to go. So you would... The percentage uh, will be in the 75 to 80% range. I see. But remember this, there will be many problems in the meantime. Right. I do not wish to bring negativity to the conversation. So but I will I, not discuss them. But I, I understand that you mean 75%, not of 7 billion, but of a smaller amount. Yes. Right. Uh, now, um, there is a big question. Is it uh, Homo sapiens which will uh, uh, move to Teraha or would it be already the next um, uh, human race which would be uh, no, it not will Homo be sapiens? Homo sapiens moving to Teraha, but they will be changing from Homo sapien to fourth dimensional beings. And there are those that are aliens that are already there. And there are those that have been homo sapiens that are already there also, but the population of Teraha is very low. I understand, thank you. So my uh, question would be, we already, I think, absorb, uh, absorb the, uh, uh, the origin, the beginning of the new species. Uh, some of the children are very unusual and very talented, so, uh, What's, what's their role then? It is written in the tablets what they shall do. If you understand the layers of the tablets, you will understand what their role is to be. I'm completely ignorant and I don't think I, uh, I even know where to start. That is, uh, you will find it, the information when you need it. It's actually a big interest of mine. Uh, what What is the main change of the, in the new uh, generation and um, uh, how it much of new, the old? It's a new thought process, a new energy to be accepted. Your fourth dimensional energy is apparent already. And there are portals that are releasing fourth dimensional energy to the earth little by little, so that people may slowly become part of it. However, whenever realizing your fourth dimensional energy, more of your brain will open and a new thought process will come to light. All right. Uh, can you recognize that thought process? What is it? Uh, I, I'm feeling that there would be more equality and more uh... Uh, egalitarian, egalitarian ideas of... Um, the first thing you will notice will be a more unconditionally loving person. That is one that has accepted the fourth dimensional energy in its entirety and will become as one with all of the earth. Right. So that's very much uh, what is uh, the Hindu teaching and Buddhist teaching is and actually Chinese teaching about unity and uh, and peace inside. The Day of the Jing will also tell you much you need to know about the future. 
Uh huh. Uh, let me switch to personal questions. Um, so I'm I'm doing the research on on DNA and trying to figure out the the resonance code of the DNA, how to read, how to interpret the the sequence, and how to read the resonance in the sequence. Can you give any advice in this direction? I can tell you that with the fourth dimensional energy opening up on your planet, these resonances will change eventually. They are still not changed at this time. So there, the resonances will be able to be found in, in their third dimensional way. But they are made with many kinds of energy. DNA is not one kind of energy, but many kinds of energy put together. And so therefore, when you're looking at DNA, you must look for the different energies that are there and the different ways that these energies react one with another. If you study energy first, you'll have a much better chance of understanding DNA. Right, I, uh, I understand what you're saying. When you use the word energy, that for me would be the frequencies. Yes. And uh, DNA actually, yes, uh, it looks like it, ha it supports a lot of various frequencies starting from extremely low to extremely high. Yes, exactly. These frequencies were put in this way for a reason. There are lower frequencies for basic, uh, basic actions and there are higher frequencies for higher actions. These create changes within the physiology and within the spiritual realms of the being as well. All realms of the being are held accountable by the DNA. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's, I guess, the key question. How does the DNA transform uh, our physical and chemical material energy, material information into the spiritual and back, back and forth? Remember this. Energy, energy was the beginning of all things. Energy can be transformed into light and matter. So therefore, that is the secret of DNA, is that it's a transformer. It creates life in the physical, in the light, and in the spiritual, because it can be transformative, just like God created it to be. You understand that in the, in the female, as it, it begins to grow a human inside, it is transforming energy and matter into spirit and light. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I understand. Right. Um. Therefore, let me continue. Okay. Just so you may understand something. You know that every inch of the body has DNA within it, correct? All right. And every one of these pieces of DNA are identical. Is that correct? More or less, yes. If there is one element of DNA that is not identical, then its purpose is far different than the, the others. All right. Mm -hmm. So most DNA looks very much the same, if not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. and therefore, the workings of these odd pieces of DNA are a secret to the formation of all things in the body. Right, uh -huh, I got it. Um, the next question I had uh, was, um, now I'm looking at a connection between the DNA and the firing of the neurons. The DNA sits in the, in the nucleus of the neuron and the firing happens on the branches. So there should be some connection between one and another because they, um, the neurons, uh, the the firings in the branches are responsible for, for action and movement and expression, physical expression and physical sensation. And the DNA is a 
as a portal to the spirit. So they have to communicate somehow. And I just sure. wonder if you have any insights into that. The, the brain is divided into lobes and areas that are specifically set up for certain things and certain activities. And the neurons that are there within those particular areas have a sequence that must be used when firing and giving information to the branches. Are you following me so far? When you say sequence, you mean DNA sequence or firing sequence? Firing sequence. Okay. So they, these neurons have their own circuitry, their own pre-mapped out reasonings, if you will. And they can be worked just like any circuitry. You can run energy through parts of it and not through other parts of it. And so uh -huh. when the DNA wants to do a particular thing, they use a certain part of that uh, circuitry and do not necessarily use all of it. I got it. But it will cause the firing exactly the way it should be to send the message to the part of the brain that needs to bring that into an action, such okay. as the parietal, the temporal, the frontal, the occipital. Okay. The, the lobes of deciphering. Sounds great. And they go to the amygdala, which is the secondary check. The amygdala checks everything out and makes sure everything's working properly. Okay. Because it is not the main function of the brain to be the amygdala, but it is a, the secondary part of the brain for the amygdala to check and reassure that all things are working well. Does that make sense? Absolutely. New information, which is great. Yes. So therefore, you are firing your neurons in circuitry that, it, that are those particular energies that are different. The different circuitry of the energies make for the firing of the neurons. Right, but uh, how does the DNA communicate to the parts of the neuron? Easily. There is, the, there is a purpose. The, the, the DNA has created the body, so it knows all the purposes of the body and how the body functions. It is in control of the body in every way. And so it knows that even though the DNA is not the actual thought process, it dictates the thought process. Does that make sense? Yes. And so therefore, it knows what is happening in the body when the body is experiencing anything. It is connected in every single place by millions of DNA and nerves and many other things, mm -hmm. electrical systems and things of this nature. So the information given to the DNA is sent to the brain, to the neurons, and therefore the correct energies are stimulated to give the response that is needed. Um, I understand perfectly what you said. My uh, clarifying question would be, is it discoverable, the, the physical nature yes. of the connection, is it discoverable for us? Is it still electromagnetic or is it beyond electromagnetic? We have Yes, access. it's discoverable, but let me tell you why, how it's discoverable. You have to create a, a piece of machinery, a piece of technology that can register different kinds of energies in the brain as it's being work, used. Many questions will be asked and then you will see what parts of the brain are giving what energies to where. Right, I got that. Uh, my, um, I'm still working on that connection between the DNA physically located in the nucleus because it's, it's a great question, it's very simple. DNA is separate physically from the branches. It's uh, yes, it in the is. nucleus. Absolutely. And the branches are outside, it's like two microns away or three microns away. And sometimes it's even a few, uh, two feet away. The branch could be very long, uh, three feet away. 
So, yes. Uh, I mean, the, 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 there are two options. One option, there is a mysterious connection which is unmeasurable by our physics. And the second option, it is measurable. We just need to figure out what electromagnetic frequency it is or acoustic frequency it is. So the question is, is, is... Everything is measurable in the universe. God right. did not create things that do not fit into a scientific pattern. So everything is measurable, but you have to know how to measure it. And that is what I'm saying. Right. So uh, my question would be, is it, with the, are these waves already discovered by the humanity? Is it, is it just plain electromagnetic electric or is it something which we still they, have to discover, the nature of which we have to discover? They are on the right path. All right. So before we can crack that connection, we have to discover the new type of the waves, right? That you have to discover all the energies that are being used. Because right now you are only aware of certain ones. But mm -hmm. believe me, there are much more. There are many energies in the universe that no one knows about. But God creates individuals, every species, with all the different kinds of energies there are. Because that's how he is. And you remember, he has created man and aliens in his own image or imagination. And so, therefore, he uses these energies. All right. You see, I'm trying to be practical here. I have very, very I, limited I resources. And if that energy is not yet described, then that question has to be put away for a while. And I'm trying to figure out where can, can we crack the next, uh, the next discovery. We already know the principle that DNA is connected to... Uh, through frequencies with different types of the uh, molecules and with different with branches. Work, but, uh, some of these energies can work with color. That would be your next step. Right, right. That, that helps. Color is available, yes. Because there is infrared, ultraviolet, and many other kinds of colors attached to waves and energy. Right, right. And so therefore, you can attach some colors, but you have to attach them in a way that you can see them. You see, um, the Egyptian language was unknown to scientists for a long time until there was a Rosetta Stone about 200 years ago. And uh, a couple of people were able to figure out that it was the same uh, inscription written in Greek, uh, Egyptian, and one other language. Aramaic. Uh-huh. So, Right now, we have a huge human genome, 3 billion bases, which we already know the sequence, but we still don't know how to read it. So I think that's the most interesting project to be able to read the human genome. And as I assume the biggest part of it is about the brain and how the thinking works. You'll, think, so you'll find this message will also be in Sanskrit and other languages as well. But yes. I understand what you're saying, but I cannot shed a light on that at this moment because you do not have the information that you need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that the key is that to figure out how does the genome in, uh, resonate with the, with the findings of neurons. That's the key question which would allow us to decipher the sequence. Um, but if, yeah, and, and thank you for the suggestion that it was through color, then we might be able, because I don't think anybody is looking at the moment at the parts of the branch. Uh, are you, do you mean that the parts are physically separated or it's just different layers within, within the, uh, different layers within the whole branch? It depends on the neuron. Mm -hmm. Some of them actually have a more a direct circuitry than others mm -hmm, and because mm -hmm. they need to because it has to especially with the parietal lobe where motion and action are the movement of arms and legs are concerned you will find that there's more hard wiring there in the neurons because it is necessary for them to react immediately mm -hmm. and so there's more 
and vision as well, just a slight bit more. But m many times you're going to find there are so many millions of neurons and so much synapse. You're, you're going to find that there is some distance between some of them, yes. Oh, no, no, I was, uh, I was looking at one neuron and one nucleus. Yes. And you mentioned that different, the branch is called axon. So different parts of the axon or the branch would be would have different um, codes in them. Yes. I assume that these codes would be written down in microtubules because microtubules are best substance within the neuron, within the axon, which would... Absolutely, you've got that correct. Uh -huh. So, but my question is now, I, if I divide the axon into four fragments, would every fragment have a different program? That depends. The circuitry does not depend on a section. The circuitry depends on the action that needs to be delivered to the body or the information that needs to be delivered. So if you divide it into sections, you might miss part of the circuitry in another section. For the circuitry is not always the same. So the, that's the answer. So it's distributed along the axon. It's different layers of the axon of the Correct. microtubules. Uh -huh. Yes. So it's more like a holographic uh, imprint on a big network of microtubules. Ah, a very nice diagram and example. Similar to that, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. That's, that's all I had, I want, I had prepared for you. Um, I, 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 I'm just starting to study the Egyptian um, sources. I'm reading uh, Pukharic. Are you familiar with Pukharic? Yes. Andrea Pukharic. Yeah, he had I very interesting- I helped him with many things. Say again? I had helped him with many things. Right, thank you. Oh, what's your relationship to, to Huti? Are you the same thing as to Huti? Yes. Wow. Uh, nice to meet you in that capacity as well. Thank you, that helps a lot. Um, I hope you great. learned something from what I had to say. Oh, absolutely. Your uh, help was very efficient. Excellent. Um, so I guess, um, what time is now? Let me see. Oh, I'm running out of time. Uh, I guess the poetry. Are you into poetry at all? Poetry? Uh-huh. I have read poetry. I am, I am into all forms of literature. Uh, I would invite for closing, uh, if you could give us some poetry. In Egyptian language would be great. If not, then uh, in English would be great as well. I can do it ancient Egyptian if you wish. That would be great. Thank you. One moment. Oweha wan ua nachgat anziquat naikarugant Ninyo wokwal ya shen yidwat kakwa yafwat yuksh mushat nahak wati ta wa nahayomund ye jumvyokwa pwa kakwa i see shen yopak te nikwekia awa andunje Patate Kikrat Nashinja Chokyo Kats Shakot Yambota and Zuki Piad Ah Kowa Shugash Kenji Walla Rach Nashut Tura. Thank you. That that um, um, that's exciting. I, I'm very 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 excited about to hear that. It's um, a few thousand years old, so it's it's uh, nice to connect to that time. Yes. Can you do the translation? Basically, I will paraphrase for you because it will be too long to speak it. Thank but you. we have harnessed the sun's energy and used it in small pieces
to put together a world of miracles for everyone around us. But yet miracles continue to be found, even in the smallest places, even in the minute processes. Miracles can extend themselves out into the universe and create a new form of information that can someday be harnessed. Well, thank you very much. That's great. Um, and by the final close and blessing, and I have to close at that time. If you wish. May God richly bless you and bring information to your brain that is not there yet, that he might expand your thought processes so that you may know the things that he wishes for you. May he bring you enlightenment with it, and may he show you the greatest uses for all science. May he show you the greatest uses for the demands of the body and soul and spirit. May God be with you in your essence, in every molecule, so that you may expand out into the universe with your thoughts and your perceptions. Thank you. Let me give you my chant for the closing. Allah yana huma yana hula yama yana hula hana huma hana hana huma yana hana hana huma yana hana hana huma hana hula haya huma ma 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 ma. Excellent. Thank you. With that, I uh, have to close. Nice okay. to meet you, and um, I hope to talk to you very much uh, soon. Excellent. <sighs> Hello? Hey, welcome, Jim. How do you feel? I feel great. How are you? Oh, that was a good session. Very helpful in many ways. Oh, good. He was a very strong source of information. Yep. I think we found the gold mine. Yeah, he was real deep. I'm a little more used to, uh, to blue avians. They, uh, they're strict, but logical. It's easy if to, uh, you have to talk to them as a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I mean, they're not that emotional. If you explain your position, they, they adjust. All you right. Just have to, you just have to um, uh, clarify logically the reasons and why, why it is justified to ask that question. Wow. All righty then. All right. Thank you. All right, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.